Thank you for joining us again. Today, I have Jesse Walker with me. He is the owner and head coach of Training for Warriors in Lake Mary, Florida. Jesse, thank you so much for joining. Absolutely. This is, uh, I'm really excited to be here with you and get into some really important topics about life. Yeah, absolutely. Well, can you tell me a little bit more about what it is that you do at Training for Warriors? So I, my background is a personal trainer. And I was working in a corporate gym, which was amazing, um, up until twenty, the end of twenty sixteen, and and even there, I was just wanting to, yeah, I just kind of felt like I could be working closer with my clients, that there was more resources that we weren't really making available, and and I was just kind of on this quest of like, I really want to see people transform, you know, and and really, you know, deep down and almost like unconsciously, I wanted to see more transformation in in my life. Um, and you know, I would be on like Instagram and you would see like these amazing before and after pictures. And I looked at like my clients and like the clients of the other trainers in my, um, uh, on my team there at the other gym. And, and I just wasn't really seeing that or maybe it was happening, but I just felt like, um, I just felt like there was something more. And so I opened my own training studio and I'm, uh, licensed the training for warriors program, which is a fitness and motivation program. And you know, I had never owned a business before. And, and so that, that, that was a very big learning curve, but the, the fitness platform has just been amazing. And so basically what we do is uh, we work with people very closely, whether it's a, a one-on-one client, you know, trainer uh, scenario or with a small group. And we help people not just with like executing the workout of, of the day, like whatever, whatever that involves, but just like the long-term programs that people can really go from A to B. Um, and we do it in Lake Mary, Florida. We're also been working on virtual programs so that people all over can benefit from like the way that we do things. Um, and yeah, it's just really all about the transformation. And that's so, you know, that's a very, it's not like a straightforward process. Um, and that's, that, that's what I think we bring to the table is that we understand that, Hey, this like involves time, it involves a lot of moving parts mm-hmm. and just kind of being, being patient with ourselves and like our coaches are you know incredible and just really helping people get led, you know, through that entire process. So it's really about like, Hey, maybe I'm not showing up as a warrior, but I know deep down somehow, some way I could be a warrior. And so really that name training for warriors, that's, it's like, Hey, this is the, the um the training camp you know this is this is where the transformation happens so that's awesome that's what it's all about and so people who know this channel know what i'm about they might be saying well why am i talking to a trainer why am i talking to a fitness coach but what i've come to learn along my journey and recovery of PTSD and PNES is that we're not one component. We are multiple. We have so many different layers and angles to us that we have to take care of ourselves, not just our mind, not just our body, not just our heart and our soul and our, all those components, but as a whole, to become whole, we have to execute every part of those uh, to wellness. So when you're talking about transformation, are you only talking about physical transformation? Yeah, it's good. It's a good question. I mean, you know, you really can't separate the two or how many ever realms there are to a person like they're inseparable. Um, and, and I didn't really mention this, but when, you know, when I was like trying to, what I was trying to figure out was like, Hey, if we own, it'd be like, you know, if I'm working with a client and we only do strength training, but we don't do flexibility training, Mm -hmm. even though they're two different outcomes and there's two different processes, they feed into each other. Or if we only went to the gym, but we didn't do, you know, a a nutrition program to bring clarity and and more guidelines to that, we would be totally not reaching our goal. Um, So even just in the physical, like fitness realm, there's all these different, um, you know, overlapping things, but also there, there's the mind and the emotions and like, you know, what kind of things happen to us so that we become immobile? Uh, what kind of things happen to us where we don't try uh, to reach a goal again because we, we failed it? And so you can't separate the, these things. So um, in the realm of 
you know, it's almost like our, our body is the reflection of what we've been through, how we're thinking. And if I want to see an improvement in my body, that's going to involve overcoming some fears. That's going to involve, you know, maybe, you know, looking for healing. That's going to involve restoration. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's kind of been a lot uh, on my story. Um, and, and then the other thing is, um, man, fit, when you have physical fitness, that can give you an emotional boost. I mean, when I see uh, my clients that have kids or grandkids and they are able to connect deeper with their grandkids because they can like actually walk with them or pick them up or, you know, whatever it is, like, man, they have this like greater sense of purpose. And so it's like you're getting this emotional benefit from a physical ability that has been restored. So you, you just can't separate, you know, like one outcome is going to trickle into these other things in life. And that's why physical fitness is so important. You know, like you're, if you want your, your, your soul to go there, your, your body has to be able to take it. The body is the vehicle. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. I remember in my journey, I couldn't do everything at once. I had to handle what was going on in my heart and my thoughts first. And later on, God led me to, okay, now it's time to care for your physical. I just couldn't do it all yeah. at once. So sure. what would you say, what would you say is a good start for people who are saying, well, I'm not fit at all. I don't have, I don't have um, endurance. I don't have even motivation to do it, but everybody knows, or at least it's widespread knowledge that as you exercise, as you get your body to start moving, our brains reward us with dopamine and endorphins and serotonin, all these really, really good things that help us to feel better. So if there's something that people who are at that point, same place that I was, where physical fitness was not a priority at all, is there something that you would suggest to start them on their journey, start them on their path? Absolutely. I mean, physical, like, you know, what is my definition of physical fitness? I mean, that, that's really the first thing that I think people can get thrown off on. If we default to what we see in movies, you know, or, you know, we see these men that are made out of muscle and nothing is hard, or, or we see these women like playing in uh, some like crazy action role, like swinging around, jumping, running, or even just the, the, the people, the celebrities, you know, it's like, we just see, you know, so I think a lot of people have been um, dissuaded and depressed about this idea because it seems so far reaching. But if you just think about what is like the definition of to fit, um, mm -hmm. to be fit, um, to fit into something, it's like, well, what are, what are the demands of your life? What are the requirements physically? And, you know, there's also emotional and mental fitness, you know, it's like, is someone fit for a job? Do they have the competency to perform the work? Well, what, you know, so maybe someone's physical fitness is like, Hey, I just need to be able to hike up these stairs without getting totally blasted. And, or I need to not have this knee pain. And maybe that involves losing 30 pounds uh, or, you know, what, whatever that, whatever the scenario is. So it's definitely different for everyone. Um, you know, for a lot of people, like, you know, I just kind of think about our, you know, like a, a primitive version of life or like our ancestors from 100, 200, 300 years ago. Um, even that recently, like we don't even have to think about like prehistoric, but just like there was a lot less conveniences, you know, that there was um, even like just walking, you know, miles uh, or, or carrying things. Life was a lot more physical and like the hum you know, human body just adapts to whatever's thrown at it. It's just incredible. So right now we're in this age of information, age of convenience, age of instant, you know, like you can get from A to B so quickly and like without exerting any effort, you can drive somewhere. And yet like we wish that was faster, you know, so we're in this funny thing and our bodies are adapting to that. Our bodies don't have a need to be hard and strong. So they become soft and weak, mm -hmm. uh, and, but, so, but that doesn't really serve our confidence and it, it ultimately doesn't serve us. So, so yeah, I mean, I think just if we walk, if we, um, just get a little bit more active, um, my number one tip for increasing physical fitness is just to walk specifically. I mean, I guess I would in general just say be more active. Mm -hmm. Um, but for a lot of people, I mean, it's like, you know, there's not 
there's actually not too many options, you know, to, to be active unless you have like a really active task or, or, or job. So, but everyone can walk, you know, it's like, can you walk to the grocery? Can you uh, go on a walk with your family? Um, you know, and, and talking about neurotransmitters. So if I'm in a place where I'm, and, and I've been there, I've, I, I've dealt a lot with depression. I've dealt a lot with not being motivated, not having purpose in life and neurotransmitters. I mean, oh my gosh. So if I get up and get physical, I'm going to be releasing different neurotransmitters, um, chiefly dopamine when I do reps and that makes, it makes me feel good. Right. Or there's like maybe the runner's high. Um, but even just when your body knows that you're on a path, which is going to give you some kind of success, it's releasing dopamine like the whole way. Mm -hmm. And that totally is going to change like how I feel. Also, if I'm like planning to like, do, like lift something that would be like a new record, or maybe I'm just like walking farther. And maybe I just said, Hey, I'm going to do 22 pushups for 22 days. And then when I reach that finish line, I'm like, Oh my gosh, this feels great. And your body's releasing maybe some serotonin, maybe some dopamine, different uh, neurotransmitters so that you just really feel good. Um, there's also something to be said, like why I really like walking is basically everyone can do it. Now, maybe not everyone can. Someone might be in a wheelchair, someone, you know, whatever. So I think it's like you have to say like, okay, well, where am I at? What can I do? But let, let's just say walking. Like that's pretty universally, a lot of people can get up and do that. It doesn't have to be nine miles a day. Um, but what I do love about walking is, man, do it with your family, do it with your neighbor, um, get out, get, cause you are going to get the heart pumping. You are going to circulate blood to basically every tissue in the body. Um, you're going to use postural muscles to stay upright, which is going to keep your lungs open. Um, and guess what? Like you, you're probably not going to be like on your phone or you're probably not going to be sit, you know, sitting on the couch, like being passive. You can be with someone and you can actually emotionally connect or you can just process uh, you know, things in your mind. So there's just this incredible. Um, so like if I'm with, let's say you and I are walking, we're like, it's like, Hey, there's kind of nothing to do. So we might as well like talk about things that matter. Um, so that's going to actually release oxytocin, which is another really important neurotransmitter. That's going to give me belonging. That's going to build trust. Um, and that's going to help me like come to a positive mental and emotional state. Uh, and I'm using a physical tool to do it. Um, and I can be, you know, you are building a, a better relationship. The other thing with walking is there, there's different types of exercise. There's like high intensity training, there's yoga, there's tennis, there's walking, you know, like the list goes on walking and, you know, really low intensity exercise. Um, that's still higher intensity than just like sitting or, you know, or something like that. Um, walking is amazing because it releases these anti-inflammatory, uh, markers, which, are like cancer reducing and they add to longevity of life and other, they, they do this like way more or like walking or low intensity exercises like this, um, release them at like way higher degrees than other forms of exercise. So it, it will lower your stress and give you, you know, different benefits in the, sh like immediately, but also what it does for your blood vessels, what it does for your brain and your tissues and the membranes around your tissues is like incredible. So everyone can do that. I mean, I, I do a lot of high intensity training, but I also like, uh, will walk, you know, a mile or two miles or three miles. I don't have to, but I do because I enjoy it for the reasons I just listed. So I, I think that is an incredible, um, multifaceted multi-benefit thing that people can do. Health coach that I was speaking with a while back and a lot of the people who suffer with PMS, they don't know when they're going to have a seizure, so hmm. they really don't feel that freedom. But something great that she told me was whatever you do, build activity into it. So if you're spending time with the kids, do something that you can have physical activity with. If you're even making, uh, if you're making a meal, put on some music and dance around the kitchen just to yeah. get the body active. And that is so great. I didn't know yeah. that about walking. But yeah. it's so important for relationships. I've seen so much benefit. People talk about it, about going walking. I crave walking with walking partners because I know that benefit. So that's incredible. I love that.
I absolutely love that. And as mm -hmm. you were talking about, you know, your the stress goes down and the benefits are exponential. It sounds like with one. yeah. So and just to touch on that, I know that. Um, let, let's say I don't have a, a lifestyle where I'm like active and like feeling good. Like typically when, you know, if I, if I don't have that, it's going to be hard. I, I, especially if you, if you haven't done it, you know, you who are watching you, if you haven't been like, I, I have people every single day that I talk to that are in a place of low activity. They have pain in their body. They don't have confidence in their body. They don't have a good self image that is a place where it's like almost dire to get out of, but it's hard to get out of because it's like that first step is really challenging. So in anything in life, there's anything meaningful. There's always an investment phase where it's like, I'm not going to see a reward immediately, but I have to work and work. And we have to know that that's more normal than, Hey, I'm going to get a benefit and then maybe do like, we can just click on Netflix and immediately have like some really fun, cool stuff. And like it requires zero effort that's like a, an exception. That's like, I would even say a lie. Um, we've been kind of conditioned. I really believe we've been conditioned out of, Hey, I have, to, I have to work first and then I get a reward. I mean, that's just normal. When a farmer plants, he's waiting months to get his harvest. That's normal. That's real life. Mm -hmm. um, when you go to work, you get your paycheck after you've worked. I mean, th this is just, this is just normal transaction and and I have to realize it's the same way in my body hey maybe I don't feel like like we, we basically made feeling our 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 judge our our execution center and it, it it's oftentimes disserving us because it's like hey I don't feel like putting on music and dancing but you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna feel like it and I'm gonna feel good afterwards and I, I just have to I just have to understand that and make that shift where Hey, the thing that I don't want to do is actually my invitation to like the reason I don't want to do it. Maybe that's where the problem is. Maybe I need to change how I'm thinking about it. So I just want to say that because it is a mindset, mindset shift. Um, and if we don't make that shift, we're just waiting for a reward to come to us. And then it's like, okay, now I feel like I'll do it. Um, and that will just kind of, if I don't realize that I'm going to kind of stay. So that does make it hard. And that's why like having a coach or having a friend or, putting on music and like dancing like that can ease your entry that can make that activation energy a lot lower that can decrease the step you have to take so so yeah it's like find a way find a way to do it but ultimately you, you might have to tear off that band-aid and go for it um but that's something that humans are actually really good at and we've been doing it for hundreds and thousands of years but we because we have so many conveniences or we're kind of conditioned to not doing things that require work. Um, so work is just a very normal part of life. So I, I say that, like, it's kind of like not a fun answer, but it's a very normal, it's only not fun because our society is so like, uh, let's just take the easy route on everything. Like if you look around, like that's kind of the case, um, which I'm really thankful for conveniences, but you know, it, it will can just keep us where we're at and, and it's really no place to be long-term. We have to find a way to get out of it. Mm-hmm, I agree.